So we've made our pots using the simplest, simplest of method by getting a couple of plastic containers from our local plastic shop. Right, so the pots have had their holes drilled into them. You don't need to be too paranoid about how big the hole is and what is going to happen. Is there going to be enough drainage? Because it's concrete, it is going to be nice and porous, so don't stress about that at all. What you do want to get this process 100% right is some good, good potting soil. Buy this from your local garden centre because this is going to ensure the success of your pots. I always add, just because I can and because I know it works well, just a good couple of handfuls of bone meal inside my potting mixture. Now you can never add too much of this. You can always of course add too little, but a handful into a bucket like this should be more than enough. I generally go with three or four because I like to make sure that my plants are going to get the best start possible. Then we're literally going to take one or two spadefuls and pop this into the bottom of our container. Now I've chosen for this container, I've chosen a peperomia. Now this would be an indoor container that I'd be planting, or it could go on your patio as well. Peperomias are great indoor plants and they can even withstand large amounts of air conditioning because there are very few plants that can actually cope with that. You put an ordinary pot plant inside there and it'll just wither away and die. And you'll notice that when you're walking around office complexes and that, that a peperomia is one plant that will live. A really fun little plant, gorgeous, kind of textures on its leaves and also on the underside, but tough as nails. There's some other varieties as well. This little guy over here, which is just also a type of peperomia, but you'll notice it's got a much, much thinner leaf. They don't require too much water. They need medium light. So in other words, as long as there's a window somewhere in the room, you would be able to cope with this plant. It will be able to live. All you need to do is feed it once a week or whatever your liquid pot plant container says. So that's the plant food that you're going to be giving it. When these little, sp little spikes, which are actually their flowers, start dying away, all you want to do is get in there and just break them off like that. That's important. So we're going to pop this little oaky in here. Remember, we've only filled it up, not even halfway. And when you take these guys out, just make a sign like that. Pop it around the neck of the plant turn it over gently, give it a squeeze, give it a squeeze, and hey presto, off it comes. Pop that little guy in there, grabbing your spade, and then literally hold up the leaves and just start filling in the edge. Just gently push down the potting soil, because remember the potting soil is quite it's got a lot of air in it, it's got a lot of air particles in it, so as you're doing that, it is going to sink down. You don't want to stamp it down hard, you just want to gently get it into the open spaces. Final bits, folks, always make sure you've got a paintbrush on hand, best thing that you can have, just to get off all the little bits for a bit of contrast, which is going to be quite wild. I'm just going to take these little guys, pop them in around the edge, Pull the leaves back and you just smooth it down. And hey presto, here we go. Beautiful peperomia in our gorgeous, gorgeous terracotta pot. And now that is a fine specimen to go inside anyone's home. So these are all the other pots that we've made and now it's time to plant them all up. We've got a host of different plants over here. Garth, which one do you want to pot up? I want to pot up this little one, Tim. Okay, a little okay, little little baby, baby, baby yeah, one. <laughs> You're taking the easy one, guys. Yes. Right. Um, I'd like you to put a little thyme plant inside okay. this guy. This is a, a little dwarf, low-growing ground cover. Um, as a potted plant, it's great because thyme really enjoys tough growing conditions. It needs lots of sun. It doesn't like all that much water because it's a Mediterranean plant. So, you know, it's perfect in what we're doing. Yes, you're probably going to have to water it every second day because that's what herbs need in containers. If you failed with herbs in containers, it's for two reasons. One, they didn't get enough sun, or two, you did not water them enough. Of course, the other reason is overwatering. That's when you water them and they drown. I'm going to go with this awesome, awesome chili plant. Now, folks, these guys are seriously hot. Seriously hot. They start off purple, and the older they get, they then turn into the red, but they are seriously vicious, hey? So, and how do I know that? Well, if I break the guy. Ooh! Oh yeah, baby. Grab a bit of potting soil there, pop it into the bottom. Okay, and here goes my little baby in. We 
go. You know, I often see people buying herbs and that at garden centres and um, the question that I'm asked the most often is, should I just leave them in these little containers that I buy them in? And the answer is no. This is simply the, the pot that it grew in um, till this size. And from this size, everything does need to go into one size larger. And that even goes for your indoor pot plants. They can stay in this for a few months, but after that, you really do need to pot them on. And that is also one of the clear reasons for fatalities <laughs> is that the plants get too root bound inside one of these little containers. As you can see, I mean with that, look at all those roots, full of roots, which means you're gonna have to water this guy every day. If you don't water it every day or sometimes twice a day, because of the root mass and the size of the pot, they are going to die. So it is better to rather get them and move them on into a bigger pot. So that little, Red hot chili pepper can go there. And I'm gonna get this guy. Garth, I think in there, I want this beautiful guy. Um, that's an Echeveria, Black Prince. Beautiful, beautiful plant, gorgeous succulent. You pop him in it into there, and I'm gonna use the sedum. Now, Echeverias, great plant, huge family of plants. Um, come in many different guises and forms. Some with kind of frilly leaves, other with flatter leaves. But what's most important with them is that they need quite a bit of sun. Um, Garth, you can plant them on. And what I want to show folks is that how ruthless you can be with these plants. You can take all that soil off, literally just have some of the roots there and plonk them in and he will be happy. He will grow because they are tough. So. There we go, I mean, that's all you need. With these guys as well, remember we've shown you once before, you break a leaf off like that, just the leaf off, put it down like that and a new little plant will start growing. They're dead easy. In the meantime, while Garth's busy with that, I'm gonna plant this little sedum. This is an awesome sedum. It's called Gold Feather. Um, sedums are also tough as nails, great plants to use. And they're excellent in rockeries. They need full sun, very, very important. Pop them into there. Sedums are quick growing, um, really quick growing, great for the sun, can also cope with some frost, which is great for those areas where you live, um, where we do drop to minus temperatures. We're gonna pop them in there. That's the one, thank you. Then just dust them off. Okay, my little sedum is in and he's good to go. And Garth, to finish off your beautiful little etch of area, a few little pebbles. Move it round. And wouldn't that make a really fine gift? This week's viewer's question comes from Siando, who lives in Soweto. And I have to tell you, Siando, if I'm asked this question once, I am asked it a thousand times. And that's how do I get rid of the weeds in between my paving, with my gravel, and anywhere where I don't want a weed. Well, this is how it goes. And listen up carefully, because if you get this wrong, it's gonna be disastrous. You want to use products that are non-selective. That means the product that you're gonna use will kill anything that it touches. So, products out there on the market, Ritter, Roundup, any non-selective herbicide. But please, don't go spraying it willy-nilly like this when the wind is blowing, because whatever those little droplets land on, it will kill. If you are going to be spraying close to your lawn, as if your paving runs close to the lawn edge, or even your gravel pathway, please get one of those cones that you put onto your spray bottle, which literally directs the spray right down so that you can contain it. Folks, it's really important that you follow the instructions. Do not spray on a windy day, or else you might be in big, big trouble. Right, folks, so we've showed you how to make all these pots, and seriously, it's dead easy. There's no excuse. They are so simple. So now, how on earth do you keep them alive, which is often the most difficult part of the whole exercise? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to start off with the indoor plant, which is the peperomia. Now, a lot of indoor plants collect a lot of dust, obviously through sweeping and vacuuming and all those activities that happen in the home, they do naturally collect dust. And it's also because of oils and, and all the other elements that are around the home. 
And very often that is the reason why your indoor plants kind of start deteriorating because as soon as they get a layer of dust on them, they actually can't photosynthesize properly or transpire because all their little pores get clogged up. What we need to do is get hold of these little guys. They're called wonder wipes, fantastic little things. You know wonder wipes, like the things that you clean your hands with, except these are made for plants. It's important that you use the plant type because they are 100% safe for plants. If your pet gets hold of it as well, or your child and starts eating it, like, like so, yeah, nothing's gonna happen. And all you do is you take these guys, and probably once a month, and I would just go and wipe the leaves nice and gently. And all it does is it just glistens them up, takes away any dirt, any excess dirt that's on them, any dust, and it keeps them nice and shiny and healthy. In terms of the other plants that we potted up, which are more outdoor, it's very, very simple. In terms of watering, you want a watering can, and remember, it's all about the plant food. Now, whatever plant food you use, just follow the instructions, please. They all do work, and preferably for small containers like this, I always suggest using a liquid pot plant food because granular fertilizers, if you put too much on, you stand the chance and the worry of burning the plant. Once we've done that, give your plants a good, good watering, and as you're watering, so you're feeding, and that's the joy. You're kind of getting it all done in one go. And you can also use this for your indoor plants, because remember, in your container, the plants are getting their nutrients from nowhere else except what you're giving them. And that's all you need to do. It's as simple as that. Enjoy making these pots, enjoy feeding your plants and making sure that they are gonna grow up to be great and healthy. Till next week, folks, enjoy the potting, take care of you and yours, and most importantly, happy gardening. Make 15% more concrete from every bag. The Gardener is brought to you by PPC.